When you create a pivot table, the pivot table fields list shows all the potential fields for your pivot table. Each field corresponds to a column in the original data set. You can also create new fields, called calculated fields, with pivot table tools. These are a lot like new columns in the data source. However, as this video will illustrate, they aren't the same as new columns and you have to be careful. For illustration, I will again use the online purchases data set you see here. I have already created a typical pivot table based on columns A to J. I have also created two new columns, original value, the value of the purchase if the items weren't on sale, and spent per item, the total spent divided by the number of items purchased. However, I haven't added these new columns to the pivot table range. Looking ahead, it makes perfect sense to find sums of original value in a pivot table, and I will eventually do so. But because spent per item is a ratio, it doesn't make sense to sum its values, although it does make sense to average them. In fact, I have already done some manual calculations to the right to find sums of original value and averages of spent per item. The breakdowns by gender are accomplished with Excel SUMIF and Average IF functions, and I have used range names to make the formulas easier to understand. Now I will try to replicate these calculations with calculated fields in the pivot table. Keep in mind that the pivot table is totally unaware of the new columns I just created. To create a calculated field, I will select Calculated Field from the Fields, Items, and Sets list on the Pivot Table Tools Analyze ribbon to get the Insert Calculated Field dialog box. Then I will enter a name for the new field, a formula for it, where I can use existing fields in the field list, and click Add. I will do this twice for the two calculated fields I want to add. If I need to modify or delete a calculated field, I can go back into the same dialog box, select the field I want from the top list, and modify or delete it. Note that the two new fields are now checked in the fields list, and each has been added to the values area of the pivot table. I'll change this so that only sum of original values is in the values area. Now compare the totals in the pivot table to the values I calculated manually. They are exactly the same. So far so good. Next, I will place only spent per item in the values area. Now there is a problem. These values do not match my manual calculations. They're not way off, but they're not the same. Besides, the pivot table indicates sum of spent per item, and the values you see here are way too low to be sums. Also, if I try to show them as averages, I'm not allowed. The Summarize By option is disabled. 
So what is going on? Excel uses a very specific rule for calculated fields, and you need to understand the rule to avoid mistakes. Specifically, for each cell in the pivot table, it first sums each field involved in the calculated field formula, and then it applies the formula to these sums. This works fine for calculated fields like original value, where summing makes sense, but it doesn't work on many other types of fields, particularly those involving ratios. To be specific, the male value you see here isn't the average over all male purchases. It is the ratio of two sums, the sum of total spent for all male purchases divided by the sum of items ordered for all male purchases. I have calculated this ratio and two similar ratios in the data sheet for illustration. These ratios are clearly not the desired averages. In fact, they probably have no significance whatsoever. In short, the spent per item calculated field isn't relevant for this example. If you really want averages for spent per item, you should create a spent per item column in the data set, as I have, and then include it in the pivot table range so that you can summarize it by averaging in a pivot table. On the other hand, a calculated field like original value, where summing makes sense, works fine, and no new column for it is necessary in the original data set. So whenever you are tempted to create a calculated field and include it in a pivot table, you should think carefully through Excel's rule. The calculated field might work perfectly, but it might produce meaningless results. Actually, when you learn about the Power Pivot add-in in the follow-up course to this one, you will see that it also has something called measures. Measures are much more useful than the calculated fields discussed in this video. In fact, once you learn about measures, you will probably never use the type of calculated fields discussed here.